Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Brenda Farkas, co-pastor at Living Hope Fellowship. I'm Matthew J. Farkas. I'm the pastor of Living Hope Fellowship. The question is, if the Bible is God speaking to us, how do we apply it today? We're here to show that the Bible is still relevant today. The name of the show is Say What? Say What? What? With Pastor Matthew and Brenda Farkas from Living Hope Fellowship. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about the supernatural. Uh, in, in a show in the past, a way past show, I said something about the natural should, the supernatural should be natural to us. We are super, and I like to say we're supernatural people living in a natural world. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the say there's verses in the scripture that say the just shall live by faith and that we're saved by grace through faith mm -hmm. so faith is probably an operating force in the supernatural mm -hmm. and also faith creates realities well, what's in, saying. you know just to get off on that what's interesting mm -hmm. to me is there's nine fruits to bear witness that you've been born again mm -hmm. and the word faith there is faithfulness you get over into the nine manifestations to bear witness that you've been filled with the Spirit. So mm -hmm. it, there's two nine-fold mm -hmm. fruits to show that you've been born again, and nine-fold manifestations mm -hmm. that you've been filled with the Spirit. That faith there is a supernatural faith that's passive. Mm -hmm. the faith Which one? In, the, in, in the manifestation of the Spirit. Okay. And, and the fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. Mm -hmm. It's like you're faithful. If I give you my word, right, right. I show up. Mm -hmm. I do what I say I say I do. Mm -hmm. I mean what I say I say what I mean. But in faith, this is what's very intriguing to me. I wrote a book on faith. Mm -hmm. and You can't finally define faith into any bracket or category in the Word of God. It, it's separate on it to itself. It's something unique that God gave to man. And you don't have to be born of the Spirit to use it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like he created gravity right. in the natural realm, mm -hmm. but he also created faith in the spiritual realm as for whosoever. Yeah. When you get into Mark 11, 20, uh, 22, and 23, and you get over Matthew 21, 21, whosoever is whosoever. Mm -hmm. it, 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 there's, no, there's no gender. There's no, it's, you don't have to be saved or unsaved. Mm -hmm. You can take the principle of faith so there's no there, there's there's, there's no, no boundaries, no bound, limits yeah, on it. No there's no category for it. You don't you can't fit yeah. it in and say this is just a Christian thing right. or a biblical thing. God lets mm -hmm. all men operate mm -hmm. in faith mm -hmm. that He created this world with. And and if you go back to Hebrews eleven three, it said when He looked into the darkness in Genesis chapter one two, mm -hmm. and the earth was without form, vo voidless, empty, and surrounded with water and dark and all et cetera et cetera, yeah. and the Holy Spirit hoovering over it he said light be he spoke light into it he allows you to use that force of faith mm -hmm. if you want to call it force right he allows you to have faith to speak into your life to create realities so that you can make something out of your natural and i take it on this on this god lets the sun shine on the the righteous and the sinner mm -hmm. he lets rain come on rain. the righteous and mm -hmm. the sinner so he lets faith mm -hmm be for whoever wants to operate in faith. You get that touch of God in your life. Well, it has to be it has know. to be a starting point, don't you agree? Yeah, and because I think that's how it births. And faith. I think that's how your spirit knows there's yeah. something bigger than yourself because mm -hmm. faith faith creates realities. Yep. Even mm -hmm. though you're not born of the spirit, even though you're not a Christian, mm -hmm. so to speak, except to Jesus, you still have a part of God in your life. So you get introduced to the creator through faith, and it's interesting because it's a power that creates realities for whosoever. So that leads so. into my next question. Do you need faith to operate in the supernatural? Yes. There's, it's interesting. Okay, 
everything in the new birth, like let's say you get born of the Spirit, you get the well of water in you. He takes the nature of sin out. He puts the nature of God in you. Everything that comes to you from God has to be faith. Mm -hmm. Faith comes based on God's word. Okay. The hearing and hearing, hearing of the mm -hmm. word of God. Romans 10, 17. Yeah. Right. And so, um, but there's a way that faith operates. If mm -hmm. you believe it in your heart, right. confess it with your mouth, it creates the reality. Which is Romans 10, 8 to 10, how you come into right. the born again experience. But when experience. it flips over to the yeah. spiritual side and you want to walk with God, yeah. it does get Pacific. Mm -hmm. Our faith is not based on what you want or desire. Mm -hmm. It's based on his promise. Okay. Okay. And so God has given us certain promises. He gave us his word. And he exalted his word above himself, above his throne, above who he is. In other words, he honors his word above anything else. Mm -hmm. And so when you place your faith as on his promise, mm -hmm. that's how pass. God is here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what it is. So you get born again, you, you, you hear, you got to accept Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. you, you're, you're separated from God. Yeah. You go to hell. Yeah. You know, you're in a darkness. You're, you're yeah. searching. However the gospel was presented to you, mm -hmm. the basic bottom line was you have to accept Jesus Christ. Right. Okay, it's a gift given to you by God. To receive that gift, you have to reach up and receive it. When it gets over to manifestation of the Spirit, it gets interesting because the Holy Spirit manifests as He wills. Mm -hmm. But to move on those manifestations, you still have to apply faith. Right. So the faith doesn't produce the manifestation. Like over here in the new birth, okay. faith produces the promise. Right. Mm -hmm. But over here in the field of the Spirit, the manifestation chooses you as mm -hmm. He wills. Mm -hmm. But you can't operate it unless you have faith. You, mm -hmm. you, you have to move in it to release it. Other than faith, it's passive, but you still got to believe in it. You still got to operate it. You still got to rest in it. Mm -hmm. So there's still a faith, but the faith comes after. And in and, and, and the new birth, it's before. Before God mm -hmm. moves in you, when you, on God's word, you have to believe it to receive it mm -hmm. and speak it. Over here, he moves. That's why it doesn't matter if you have faith or not. For example, let's, uh, here, here's what I'm saying. In John chapter um, 5, mm -hmm. Jesus is taking a shortcut yep. to go to one of the festivals, mm -hmm. all right? That's Pentecost, Tabernacle, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so he's coming, or Passover, and he's coming through Pentecost. He's coming through, and he wants to celebrate. Mm -hmm. So he takes a shortcut, and, there, yeah. and there's five pools, okay? And he's cutting through, and all of a sudden, there's five sections of sick folk. Mm -hmm. uh, so we always say that it's the wards of a hospital. Yeah, so I always like, like yeah, this. Picture, picture, like that. picture mm -hmm. a hospital, and there's five wards, yeah. five wings to a hospital, mm -hmm. and he's cruising through the middle of it. Mm -hmm. All these sick people, but the Spirit of God manifests because Jesus filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. We know that at age 30, he came to the water. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit came upon him. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Acts 10.38 gave confirmation how God anointed Jesus and asked with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all the oppressed or dominated by the devil for this was God's plan. Mm -hmm. And so he's walking through and all of a sudden the Spirit of God quickens, mm -hmm. manifests, and he looks at one man. Right. Now in a hospital, let's say there's 500 beds. Right. And so there's 500 people laying around this pool for the when, moving yeah, of the water. When I worked in a hospital in one of the departments, that's how mm -hmm. you categorized your your marketplace for the hospital how many okay. beds there were you know? okay so All that right. put you in different purchasing for you, okay. limits you know? i got you for yeah. receiving it with, yeah. all right and so he, he the spirit of god manifests he he draws his attention to one man mm -hmm. and when he looks at that one man the spirit of god by the word of knowledge shows him how long he's been there yep. what his condition is mm -hmm. And what God wants to do, right. which which now flows into the word of wisdom, mm -hmm. and so Jesus could have just went on, mm -hmm. but he applied his faith. He steps out and says to the man, "Would you like to be healed?" Okay. Because I think a lot of times we've had manifestation of the Spirit, but we think, "Oh, that just that just that's my stomach, that's just my stomach gut, or you know, what I mean, that's just intuition, that's mm -hmm. just my perception, or." I just think I picked up that thought for some reason, and because that's how natural, supernatural things are. Some kind of positive energy. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? But with Jesus, he, he looked, and the manifestation of the Spirit quickened to him mm -hmm. exactly who this man was, how long he's been there, 
and what God wants to do. So Jesus could have went on, you know, but what he recognized was the manifestation of the spirit of word of knowledge and word of wisdom there. So he takes a step of faith and says, would you like to be healed? Mm -hmm. And the man thought he was joking. He said, yeah. what do you, I've been here 38 years. And you, Why do you, you think I'm sitting here? You know, here? I don't have anybody mm -hmm. to put me into the water when it moves to be healed. Mm -hmm. Are you, is this a joke? Mm -hmm. Every time I make a move towards the water, someone beats me into right. it. So if you, if you common sensely think that out, it was people with a less disease mm -hmm. that beat him into the water. Right. He's paralyzed. He's, mm -hmm. he's laying on a cot, right. a, a bed of sickness. Mm -hmm. And for him to move to that water, someone mm -hmm. would have to carry him, right. or two men would have to move his cot there. Mm -hmm. So he says, I have no one that's ever helped me because everybody's there to get healed. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 weak, the strongest of the weakest right. is going to make it in the water. Mm -hmm. so anyway. And the faith wasn't really the stirring of the water. The faith was, if I step in, I'll be healed. So it's faith. See, that's, that's why faith works for natural man. Mm -hmm. You can have faith in medicine. You can have faith in your mask. You can have faith in a because person. Because that man actually observed right. like working for somebody Everybody else. can have faith in yeah. something. God's allowed us to have that because mm -hmm. we're a spirit being. Yeah. A cow can't believe to have a perfect young one. He, it naturally has a calf. It, 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 it could teach to reproduce and stuff because that's what naturally it, it does. But what's unique about humanity or man is we have a spirit, which okay. is the image of God. So God allows us to be able to move. Okay and a certain degree of who he is. Here we go, this is my, ne my next question. You, le you led right into it. All right. Should people of faith be natural with the supernatural? It should become that natural. What I mean by that is when we first see it, okay, in 1 Corinthians 14, the church is natural with it. They're, they're praying in the spirit, mm -hmm. they're singing in the spirit, they're enjoying the worship of God. Yep. And then they learned how to flow, to, to hear from the Spirit, so they, they'll mm -hmm. speak some things, you know, and either in tongues or interpretation, and so it becomes very natural to them. Okay. So here comes an unlearned one or an unbeliever in. Mm -hmm. The unbeliever is like, oh my God, what is this? These, are, these people are freaks, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and same with the unlearned one. But all of a sudden, what's natural to the supernatural people, they begin to speak again in the, in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, it can either come in the tongue or the interpretation. I've, for example, in Acts chapter 2, when, when they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, they got drunk in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. They literally got drunk. They were accused of being stone drunk. Right. And Peter stands and says, we're not drunk as you presume we are. Mm -hmm. We're filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, they're speaking in tongues. All of, them are, all of a sudden, the Spirit of God comes upon them. They begin to speak in tongues, it's very natural. As the Spirit gives them utterance, they begin to speak it. Mm -hmm. And all around the Roman Empire, people came in, and when they left Jerusalem, you would pick up the, the place you moved in their language, their customs, their culture, and then if you're the second, third generation, you kind of forget Hebrew. Right. You know, you're in that, I mean. And so they come back because it's something that God required of them to attend three right. times a year. And the true Jews would come back in. Mm -hmm. They would travel across the Roman Empire and they would come mm -hmm. to Jerusalem to celebrate the feasts. And while they're there, they get filled with the Spirit. And Peter and the boys, 120 of them, begin to speak in other tongues. Mm -hmm. And every portion mm -hmm. or facet of the Roman Empire was hearing their lay. Right. Arabian and, and uh, Asian. And, and they're like, and, wow, they're, they're yeah, speaking they're our speak language. Right. And so that came through the speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. But then in a church sometimes it can come through the interpretation, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom come through mm -hmm. the speaking of the tongue or just prophecy. So and so that person hears their inner heart. They, yeah. they think, oh my God, how did they know me? How did they right. know those things about me? And it says they fall down and they worship God. So, so but to those that were doing it, it was natural. Mm -hmm. But the person came in, it was very supernatural. Yeah. They, they're thinking, how did they know that about right. me? That, that's woo, woo, so it was Twilight un, Zone stuff. Unnatural, you know? supernatural to them. Yeah, but to the people doing it, it becomes it natural, natural to them, right? Okay. Because it's a part of their spiritual life it now. Was it's their a spiritual part of, expression. Part of their worship, because right? Because your spirit's all in body. So we all know how you give a body expression. Right. I mean, you know, all know how you give a soul expression of right. yourself. But how do you give an expression of your spirit? There's only one way. And another question that brought up while you were saying that. So if it's supposed to be natural to me, 
How do how does supernatural become more natural? How do I make it more natural? There's only one way to do that. Because we're used to doing performance stuff. There's only one way to do that. Mm -hmm. To be more natural to a born again Christian would be standing on the promises of God. What I mean by that, a lot of Christians have been born in spirit. They have accepted Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they have never experienced the presence of God in their life. It, God's always on a throne. God's in the universe. He's not God's out there somewhere. To them. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So what happens is God gave us faith. Mm -hmm. Now faith comes by the hearing, hearing of the word. That's Romans ten seventeen. Because right. he stands if you by study, the word. Uh, yeah. All right. If you study every miracle mm -hmm. of Jesus, it either came by manifestation of the spirit or by faith. Mm -hmm. The majority of them were by faith. He mm -hmm. said, "Daughter, your faith has made whole." He said to the blind men, "Let it be according to your I faith." Because I like that about God. He makes it an equal playing field. Right. He doesn't. But when it comes to the deeper things of the spirit. He needs you to draw into him. That's right. In order for him to share. Right. So in the yeah. in the in the new birth, the people have just been born of the Spirit, and they don't mm -hmm. go any deeper. Yeah. To experience God in their life, to mm -hmm. to make it more natural, the mm -hmm. supernatural, you have to follow the promises of God. You have to stand. I on thought the, you were going to say something different. What were you going to think I was going to say? I thought you were going to say that the you always teach, not always, but you teach that that tongues. No, is you're it, in a, wait a minute. the you're, expression of your I'm spirit. not there yet. Okay. I said just for those that are born again. You're okay. not following me. Now, when it comes to people filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I'm following you now. You follow me now? Mm -hmm. In the new birth, people that just accepted yeah. Jesus Christ, they don't accept, they don't get baptized in the Holy Ghost, speak mm -hmm. in tongues. Mm -hmm. For God to become natural to them, they have right, to do it okay. through the promises of God. They have to get acquainted with him through his through word. Through his word. Because the word of God reveals God to you. Right. To get to, to get to know your mom and dad, you yeah. talk to them, you communicate, right. you hear their words. You mm -hmm. And if you want to get on your mom so and dad's good side, you right. do what they ask you to do. Right. It brings you into favor with them. You get close. The parent draws closer. So if, to me, I, my little brother did that, mm -hmm. and they ha he has a special relationship with so, me. I was a black sheep, right. and I had to rebuild my relationship mm -hmm. With my parents because I totally After the fact. destroyed. <laughs> I destroyed any relationship I have with my brother, sister, and my parents. I mean, I just I blew it out of the water. But now that's one way you do it through the acquaintance of the word, and it's through faith. Now, when you get over to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's only one way your spirit can give expression. Mm -hmm. Over here, your spirit never gives expression, right? Which is sad. It's God revealing Himself to, to you, you through His Word. Through his word. Right. Making a relationship. It's actually, if you want to build your relationship with God, mm -hmm. you have to do it, why don't we back up? Mm -hmm. If you want to build a relationship with God, uh -huh. it, you know, if you think there is a God, if you actually want to go there, right. then how are you going to get to know him? Well, you'd have to get acquainted. Now you've been introduced, but now you have to get acquainted. How do I get acquainted? Well, you have to talk and listen to him talk to you. So how does that happen? Mm -hmm. It's a communication in the realm of the spirit by the word and prayer. Mm -hmm. So then you build your relationship. Mm -hmm. That's that's how you build your relationship with God. And I and a verse right. I get with you while you're saying that's mm -hmm. Hebrews eleven six. Yeah. Without faith is impossible. Please right. God. Right. And that please there mm -hmm. is like a parent's pleased with their child. And then my description that I didn't tell you ahead of time is the verses it goes through the two or three three or four places it says the just shall live mm -hmm. by faith. So faith is very important. Right. Second Corinthians five is one of those and places. There's one in Hebrews, right. and, there's, and one in Romans, and I, think. Romans I think. But what's interesting to me is when you get over in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you receive the Holy Spirit and you have the evidence of speaking in tongues, the Spirit of God gives you utterance. And there again, you have to use it by faith. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people that accepted the Holy Spirit, but they say, I, I didn't speak in tongues because they try to do it out of their mind. They try to do it out of their logic. They try to do it out of their reason. They try to do it out of their feeling. They try to do it through their natural man, so and it didn't happen. It's just a flow of faith. You, you, you accept that utterance, and you open your mouth and allow God to give you the utterance, and you, by faith, speak it out. And then you, you receive the fullness of the Spirit. Now, to get more acquainted with God, your spirit only has one way to come in oneness with God, and that's through the speaking in tongues. Okay, got another and that's question. in first, first Corinthians chapter 14, 14 and okay, 15. Got another question. So when I grew up in church and then uh, I followed into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, my people from before said, you, you better not go there because you cannot tell God what to do. And those people try to make God do something for them. And, and so they affect, I think, they, I think what their communication to me was, was 
you use your faith now to make God manifest for you mm -hmm. in the supernatural. And that, but I think our problem with the supernatural is that he does it as he wills. So okay. we, can, we can approach him in faith. Mm -hmm. We can approach him with the desire to see his manifestations. But at some point, mm -hmm. it's on his here, end me, as he wills. Here, let me show you, show you how I see it. Okay. When I'm just born again and I want God to be a part of my life, mm -hmm. I have to stand on his word. I have yeah. to rest on his word. After I've done all, I stand. Right. I, I find, let's say I need, I'm, I'm, I'm staying up every night, I'm worrying, mm -hmm. I'm getting sick in my stomach, um, the bills are due, or, or a child's on the run, or mm -hmm. oh my God, my marriage is on the rocks, my job, I'm losing my job, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. So I find scriptures in the Word of God that teach me to cast my care onto Him and keep my mind on Him. Mm -hmm. When I find scripture and I do that, I, I by faith begin to apply those God begins to supernaturally move for me, mm -hmm. takes the worry away from right. me, gives me peace. And so I get yeah. that supernatural. I see God mm -hmm. moving in my right. life. I see his glory. I, I experience God mm -hmm. in my life. But over in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Your faith where, draws on his faithfulness. There on you his go. word. On yeah. his word. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I always give the story. So it's God performing for you. Yeah, I mm -hmm. give the story like this. Matthew came to me one time and said, Dad, all the kids in the neighborhood have a bike and I have a cool bike, and I picked one out, and I won it. Mm -hmm. I was a little surprised when the one he picked. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I'll tell you what. On your birthday, I'll give you that bike. I promise you. I mm -hmm. give you my word. As your pappy, your dad, mm -hmm. your father, whatever you want to call me, uh, your dad, I will buy that bike for you. Mm -hmm. Now, I taught my kids if they bothered me again about the bike, I wouldn't buy it. Mm -hmm. I just said, I'm, I'm, you keep bugging me about it, I won't. you, you mm -hmm. just pee me off, I won't do it. Mm -hmm. So they learned to rest in my word. Right. Now, on a birthday, he looked for that bike. Mm -hmm. If I didn't give him a bike, my word with him would have been destroyed. Right. I would have no relationship with him. Right. But because I kept my word, my, mm -hmm. my, my relationship with Matthew and my fellowship with Matthew continued to build over the yeah. years. And then when I didn't keep my word, I would come to him and say, son, I could not keep my word. I apologize for it. I don't yeah. care what you think about me. I gave everything I had to give get you what you wanted or do what you wanted me to do. To make or my work be where, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And so God is like that, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you get over in the baptism of the Spirit. What's different about that is there's a whole different realm of getting to know Him. You got to know Him through just standing on the Word of God. Right. So you only saw God as your giver, your, your provider. Mm -hmm. You know, like your dad's a good man. He provided for the family. He, he he's a hard worker. Mm -hmm. He's a, but in the baptism of the spirit, what's kind of unique is you get a form of different kind of relationship with God. It's like your spirit finally gets to express himself and get because God is a spirit. You're a spirit. You're created in the image of God, which is spirit. Mm -hmm. God then gets you baptized in the Holy Spirit, so your spirit now can now communicate with God's spirit. Mm -hmm. with God himself. In a level you, that wasn't there before. That was not there. You can only do it through the word of God if you're following right. me. Right. So you get over here and you get filled with the spirit. And this is why the devil hates speaking in tongues and he hates mm -hmm. the baptism of the spirit. Because there's a, a there's a s incredible oneness with there's God. There's an intimacy. There's an intimacy. That's the word I was looking for. Because you can, have, you can have a person that's your relative and you can have a person that's your friend. But in those relationships, that intimacy is to the level of whatever those things okay. are. But when you're in mm -hmm. this kind of relationship, I always, I always look at it like this. The speaking in tongues is the total epitome of intimacy. that You, you can't get right. any more intimate I, I, than your I look, spirit. I look at it even more natural than you. Yeah. We had four kids. Yeah. And Our baby's I, gonna be I, was a, I was their dad. I provided for them, and I would only see them. I'd come home around six yeah. or seven at night. You'd put them in bed at eight, eight thirty, till they got older. Yeah. And so I could, I, I would spend maybe two hours with them. Mm -hmm. So they got to know me, Dad, the provider, the worker, you know. Mm -hmm. And I would take them on vacations and try to build right. a little bit of relationship. But every day, you, you, got, you became their friends. Mm -hmm. And today, I can't get rid of them. I, mean, just, I did that to you. Huh? I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you made it so that mm -hmm. relationship into a fellowship mm -hmm. that I, I think if we'd moved to Kumbak 2, I'd turn around and two or three of them would be in Tubak 2. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, 
-hmm. I love that, but it's just not how we were raised. I mean, my mom and dad threw me out at 18 and said, don't come back. But, but you build a relationship with them. You build an embassy. You build something deep. You build a friendship with them. Or mm -hmm. I don't know how extreme it is. It's different with you than me. I'm there. I'm their dad. I have that fellowship, but it's different with you. With God, you get to know him through the word. You get to know him answering your prayers. You get to know him having your back, having an inheritance. But when you get over in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he's given you a way to express your true being in him and through him. Mm -hmm. And that's through speaking in other tongues. And that's what it talks about in, in first. So Corinthians. that's why I was asking you that. Here, here, here's, in order for you got to really hear I think but, people but, need to hear the scripture so they don't say I'm, I'm making something up. There, people of faith can be, should people of faith be natural with the supernatural? In general, yes. But specifically, if you're going to ask the Holy Spirit, you're going to be available I'm, to the I'm Holy getting Spirit. To where, I know where your thought is going. To, I'm to move there. on you. Mm -hmm. It says we teach tongues as the doorway into the right. supernatural mm -hmm. because it's the only place the innermost part of you, right. that spirit part of you, can give expression. Right. In, in, in verse 2, it says, He that speaks in unknown tongues speaks not unto men, but unto God. There you go. Mm -hmm. In verse 14, If I pray in tongues, yeah. if I pray by the tongue that the Holy Spirit gave me, my spirit, mm -hmm. the real me, the eternal Matt, mm -hmm. that's going to span eternity Right, your body's going to dissolve the dust. Right. I'm not, asking, yeah. I'm not asking him to heal me. Yeah. I'm not asking him to deliver me. I'm not asking mm -hmm. him to give me prosperity. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking him to give me a wife. I'm not asking him to give me a good job. I'm not asking him to blah, blah, blah. What I'm doing is I'm coming in and, and getting to know him. And my spirit gets to express itself by praying. It's the only way your real you yeah. can express yourself to God. To get to know him, that intimacy mm -hmm. is by speaking in other tongues. My spirit prayeth, mm -hmm. but my mind, my will, my emotions... And my feelings is unfruitful. Mm -hmm. What is it then? I will pray with my spirit. Yeah. And also I can pray with my logic, my reasoning, yeah. my natural man, my feelings. I also can sing with mm -hmm. my spirit, my real me, the eternal yeah. me, the part that's the image of God. Mm -hmm. And with my natural man, who I am in the natural, mm -hmm. with my mind, my logic, my thinking, my feeling. And so God's built a way for us to enter out of the natural mm -hmm. into the supernatural, like you just said, yeah. out of the natural realm into the spirit. And that connection is the speaking in tongues, because it goes on, no man will understand you when you speak in spirit, but you're speaking mysteries. So, nice. And I have a sermon, I don't think we ever put it on Fact TV yet, I did four or five weeks mm -hmm. of what that mystery was. Yeah. The mystery is God's will, Christ yeah. in you, I mean, it can go on and on. It's unique when you get to express yourself through the way God designs you to express yourself with him. Mm -hmm. These mysteries become natural to yep. you. These mysteries become known to you. These mysteries allow you to walk in the depthness of God that you can't reach just by standing on the word of God. So when I was questioned by people that I admired uh -huh. spiritually. And I'm going to go one more place when okay. you're done. But I, want, I don't want to lose my thought. When uh -huh. I was questioned by people that I admired spiritually mm -hmm. as to why this was so necessary for me, why was I going to separate from my upbringing and, and what they told me mm -hmm. to this new thought to right. them right. that me, they didn't feel like was tried and true, mm -hmm. why was I going to do that? To them, I was telling God what to do. I was becoming a control person mm -hmm. because I was saying that I am... More spiritual than them because I can control no, I, outcomes because I can tell God how to move for me and he'll move for me because I'm doing this supernatural thing with God. But to me, I didn't look at it that way. To me, I looked at when I did not have the experience of the Baptist Holy Spirit speaking mm -hmm. in tongues. When I prayed, I was more controlling in my prayer then because I said to God, I, I, okay, I this is what I want you to do mm -hmm. and this is how I want you to do it. So I'm praying out my desire to you. Your word says I can have the desires so, of my heart. Okay. I'm lining up that's my desires. That's what I said a few minutes so, ago. Right. So I think, that's more, I think that's more impure than saying, I'm just going to be intimate with God, and I'm going to let him have mm -hmm. his way. Because right. that's what intimacy does. Intimacy submits to someone else and says, let you okay. have your way. So I think, mm -hmm. I think by being intimate with God in the realm of the spirit, supernaturally, it becomes more natural when I do it more often. Right. Also, right. also, I, also, 
I believe it's more pure and, and because it's not me. All right. It's me, all about God, not all about me. Right. You answered where I was and where okay. I'm going. So right. that's kind of unique what yeah. you just did. But anyway, in four, he who speaks in an unknown tongue, here's the key, mm -hmm. edifies himself. We don't know what that means. That word there means construction. Yeah. It's like if I go and I want to build a house, I hire an architect, I hire maybe an engineer, I hire some people to help me build a blueprint, mm -hmm. blueprint, yeah. to how I want to construct the house. Mm -hmm. That's what speaking in ting tongues begins to do. Okay. He begins to lay the foundation in mm -hmm. your spirit. He begins to build the walls, the floors, the roof, et cetera, et cetera. And that's unique because what, what happens in the new birth when you're just standing on the Word of God, mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of like needy all the time. You're like saying, God, I need prosperity. God, I need this. Or, you're God, pointing I need that. out what you need. And I love that, what mm -hmm. you said, but we're not telling God what to do. Mm -hmm. We're standing on His promise. That's where right. a lot of people miss it. Mm -hmm. No, He gave me His Word. He would do that. Mm -hmm. Just like when Matthew woke up on his birthday, yeah. he didn't tell me, even if he said, Dad, where's my bike? He's not mm -hmm. telling me to buy him a bike. I promised him Reminding on you. his birthday mm -hmm. I would have him a bike. Right. So he's not telling me, Dad, go get me my bike. He's reminding me that I gave his word, my word to that boy, mm -hmm. that he would have a bike on birthday. And that meant a lot to him and it meant a lot to me. Mm -hmm. It's how we began to form our relationship right. as father and son, as as faithfulness mm -hmm. and so and, and ethics and everything else. But in the Baptism of the Holy Spirit, what's kind of really unique is you begin to construct yourself. You're, you're beginning to form yourself as a vessel for God mm -hmm. because God wants to pour himself into us. He, mm -hmm. he created us to pour himself into us. Right. And that's why that was so offensive in the garden mm -hmm. when Satan came in and said, oh, you, you, you can be a God. You're a God. Come you're on. Really you you know, and yeah. God, all he wanted to do was pour into Adam and Eve. Right. He wanted to give them everything. I mean, look at the garden that he made. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing. Right. And, and man chose to walk through uh, the natural man. And so God withdrew and so forth and so on. So he brought Jesus Christ, redeemed the whole thing. And so now he brings us to the church. And here we are again mm -hmm. <laughs> in our Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. And it's our choice is how much we want of God. Right. What's unique about the baptism of the Holy Spirit to me is I prepare my vessel in a sanctification holy way through the Word of God. I construct my being for God to pour more of him mm -hmm. into me. Did you even and so when manifestations of the Spirit come, the reason they're natural yeah. is I've already built a relationship with God. I know his voice. I know his leadings. Right. I know him. He knows me. So when he mm -hmm. puts a manifestation of the Spirit on me, it's normal. I know, it, I know for number one, I know it's God. Mm -hmm. And number two, I know he, what he right. wants me to do. Mm -hmm. And number three, because I love him, because I've spent time in the Spirit, mm -hmm. I just walk that out. Mm -hmm. for, for example, Jesus spent, if you, if you follow his ministry, spent a lot of time in prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we shared this earlier, but I'll share it again because it makes a lot of sense. Him and his, the John, John the Baptist disciples and Jesus' disciples get in this big brawl. And they get in a big fight over jealousy, yeah. striving, envy, mm -hmm. which is carnal, okay? Mm -hmm. So Jesus was the bigger of the man. He draws his disciples out, and they leave the Jordan mm -hmm. and let John decrease. Kind of sounds he, like Abraham a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So Jesus goes on. He leaves his cousin, and mm -hmm. he goes out, and he's traveling through Samaria, and he comes to a well. Mm -hmm. And he sends the boys in to buy the food, right. what they need to, mm -hmm. to camp for the night or whatever. And a woman comes. Mm -hmm. And because Jesus had that acquaintance, because the Spirit of the Lord is now upon him, he knows the voice of the, mm -hmm. of the leading of God. He knows the voice yeah. of the Spirit, so forth and so on. And he spends a lot of time in prayer. While he's talking to this woman, he knows exactly what God wants him to do. Right. And it's, it's not that God, he's telling God he wants this woman free. Mm -hmm. God is giving him the information to how to set this woman free. Right. You see the difference? Because mm -hmm. in the new birth, what we do is we're always asking God for something. We're asking him for food. We're asking and for And it's from our own perspective. Right. You know. And so what happens in the baptism mm -hmm. of the Spirit when you have that it makes intimacy. It larger. Right, because God magnifies himself mm -hmm. to you. He mm -hmm. begins to use you. Right. And that's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. for. It's not for your personal use. It's for ministry to others. And so let's what just say it's not it's not to say, look at me, I'm more spiritual than you, because that's what people started to no. use it for and say, Oh well, I'm 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 more spiritual than you are because I do this and no, I I'll, do that. And that I'll, is not all right, the way. On that thought, that. just go back yeah. to when Jesus was passing through the sheep market as a mm -hmm. shortcut. Yeah. 
He had no intention to talk to any of those sick folk. Right. He was, he, he was his mind, his, yeah. he was centered. He was right. the festival was ready to begin. The trumpets were ready to blow. I mean, he right. he's heading home for family. He's home to see his right. mom and his brothers. He's heading. Mm -hmm. But because he had that intimacy with God, mm -hmm. there was a tap on him. God said, "Yeah." And he showed him a certain man. He said, he mm -hmm. looked and saw a man. Right. You're telling me he didn't see the rest of the sick people there? He's not stupid. He wasn't blind. Right. But his mind was... He was centered he, in. He was focused. centered in. He was focused as another direction. But all of a sudden, God directs his focus to a man. Right. And he goes to that man and says, you're so-and-so. You've been here and so-so. This is what's wrong with you. Would you like to be healed? I mean, Jesus had no intention of doing that. Right. It wasn't his selfish. So the Spirit of thing. God, you give the Spirit of God by having His way with you. You give the Spirit of God the permission, right, to make a demand on what He's put inside of you, right, and on that, on that, mm -hmm. how deep you want to go with Him, that drawing that you That's have, right. and He now can because He has to have somebody to host Him in the right. world because He's mm -hmm. a spirit, right. So He has to have somebody available to Him to host God's right. work through them. Right. But a lot of us are way too busy. Right. And the reason we don't have these things in our churches today, because a lot of churches don't go into the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in right. tongues, because tongues is the door into the supernatural. Right. Because first thing you receive from the Holy Spirit is the utterance. Mm -hmm. That's out of Acts chapter 2, mm -hmm. verse 4. It says, when they were filled with the Spirit, uh, here's what it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak. They began to speak the tongues as the Spirit gave them utter. Mm -hmm. It's the first time that God uses you mm -hmm. and introduces that intimacy to you mm -hmm. and allows you to come over into the depthness of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you can't go into the depthness of the Spirit through the Word of God. I'm, I'm, right. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to go there. I believe people have experiences in, in God mm -hmm. that are unique to themselves that bear witness to God's will to them. Yeah. But this is on an everyday basis. You construct your life into that realm of the Spirit where you're saying, okay, God, my vessel is now yours. Jesus said, whoever believes in the works that I do, he shall do and greater than these. That's John 14, 12. And so you're setting yourself and your mind and, so and there your you spirit. Go. That, that answers part of my question. Why do we not see God manifesting in the realm of the supernatural right. in church or in our lives individually? And that's why. Mm -hmm. Because we... We don't, we don't desire it. We don't construct it. And we don't and I, build I, I, it. I like that. Right. Yeah. And, and, and the only way to do that, in Jude 20, mm -hmm. it says the church itself must pray right. in faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And that word edify or build there in Jude 20 is mm -hmm. building the whole congregation, the whole corporate church, yeah. that we all get the concept that we're now the body of right. Christ. We we're the, the, we're the temple of, God of God's anointing. Earth. Right. Yeah. And the church has to get the concept yeah. that they are the temple mm -hmm. of God's supernatural power to manifest to the community. That he here's here's a thought. I used to say okay, this, go ahead. We have to be the church and not try to do church stuff. Or right. Not try to you know. I'm I was like, I grew it. up in Brookside, yeah. Delaware, mm -hmm. which is outside of Newark, Wilmington, Delaware, and mm -hmm. uh, my dad worked at Chrysler, and I ended up working at Chrysler, and um, that plant's not there anymore, so you can't find it if you look for it, but. I grew up there, and I'm, I remember at the end of the, they built it to where you come, one street brought you out, you know, and one street brought you yeah. in. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that street was two churches. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, I yeah. freshly born of the Spirit and filled with the Spirit. And God said to me, if those two churches would have came into the Spirit, like I designed them to come in the Spirit, mm -hmm. that community would have been different. Mm -hmm. I come out of that community, I won't even describe to you some of my friends. I have friends that killed, shot a cop in the neck and he's in prison for life. I have a friend that hung himself. I have a friend that hit tripping and hit the guard well and swallowed his tongue and died before he had the end of the floor. I have another friend running around in North Carolina drunk. I mean, I can go on and on and on. The, what came out of that community was nothing but devastating destruction. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking by these two churches, and I think I might have actually been driving. God quickened that to me and said, do you realize if I could have filled them churches with my spirit mm -hmm. and used them through my manifestation spirit, the uniqueness that could have came out of that community? So potential was lost. The potential was lost. And that's, that's the power, and that's why I get off on physics sometimes. Mm -hmm. When we're filled with the spirit, we have the potential but not the kinetic. Mm -hmm. The kinetic, you have to build that part into your life by spending time praying in the Holy Ghost. 
you got to get yourself into the supernatural by releasing the language the Holy Spirit gives you by faith. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that brings you over into the Spirit so God can instruct you mm -hmm. of how he wants you to operate in the Spirit. These things just don't fall into the church like ripe cherries. you got to birth. It's just like when you started a corporate ladder, you start at the bottom. You have to right. earn yourself up to understand how that business operates, what they demand and what they're desiring mm -hmm. out of that corporation. They don't start, start at the president's desk and say, here, here, buddy, here's the desk chair. No, you start down here right. and you move on the way up. And so uh, that's the way God designed it. He, he, he brings us in mm -hmm. through the new birth mm -hmm. where his child but then he waits to see who desires more of him. Right. You get filled with the Spirit. Because he's all about personal choice. Right. He is. Mm -hmm. And that's what the devil moved in on in the garden, since you referenced the garden. The devil moved in on God's design of personal choice. He perverted it. And now we all live by our personal choices and we're a mess. And, and that's right. Because mm -hmm. he told Adam and Eve, you can do what you mm -hmm. want to do, go where you want to do, right. say what you want to say, be what you want to say. Not by our spirit. That's right. You totally walk by the natural man, and where did that end? In right. a flood. Right. God said, I almost repented that I made man because they're corrupt. All they think about day and night is corruption mm -hmm. of the flesh. Right. And so and so when you're born again, you come out of that corruption, you're you're separated out of it, because he takes that separation of God out of you, puts him in you. But then he does, he waits to see if you want to come into the realm of the spirit. He wants to see if you want to come in. Mm -hmm to be a servant of the supernatural, the servant right. of the Holy Spirit. And G, and you say, give me scripture. Okay. When G called 12 men alongside of him, mm -hmm. he prayed all night. Mm -hmm. He comes down the mount. He chooses mm -hmm. 12. And he said, yeah. one of you will be a devil. Right. <laughs> one of you should have not even been born. One of you is going to betray me. He, right. he even knew that in prayer. Mm -hmm. that's, that's walking in the Spirit. Right. Even the people he picked knew who they were going to be. Right. And so... He comes down and he picks. He even picks the person that's going to betray him. He knew it in his spirit already who it was. Mm -hmm. And so he picks them. And then he allows them to move in the spirit a little bit to experience what yeah. it would be like mm -hmm. walking in the spirit right. for them to crave it, to desire it. Mm -hmm. But then on the resurrection day, he comes back into the room. Judas hung himself. His mm -hmm. guts blew out because mm -hmm. he hung himself. So he's down to 11 men. Thomas wasn't there, so he's in down to 10 men. Mm -hmm. He breathes in them, says, receiving the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And notice it says it's alta, actually it's alto, it's a dative, a little ziggy under there, I, iota underneath the long O. That means it's a date. it means in. He breathed into them mm -hmm. and they received it and they were born again. And I can prove to you by the scriptures that they truly had a born experience. But he said this right before he left that moment. He said, before you go into ministry, before you go out and serve me to the community, before you leave and mm -hmm. go into the world, I want you to go into the upper okay, room so now you're and going wait to, to be endued yeah. from the Holy Ghost yeah. to receive the same power that I received. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you notice that, when he picked the 12, mm -hmm. he anointed them with the same power. Yeah. When he picked the 70, he anointed them with the same mm -hmm. power. When he picked 120, he anointed them with the same power. Mm -hmm. If Jesus, through his whole ministry, mm -hmm. selected certain people and then empowered them, mm -hmm. why do we think that he selects us and doesn't want to empower us? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because we can't go out and fight the devil on our own strength. We can't go out in the world and fight sin against our own flesh. Mm -hmm. We need the power and the wisdom of God to effectively make us uh, a giant in the spirit or make us effective in the world that we live in because there is a force in the world called evil mm -hmm. it's out to kill still and destroy we see the the results of it all around even mm -hmm. in a community like this you see the destruction of that so mm -hmm. how do i change that right. i don't have the strength the ability the power to do that no man does mm -hmm. but god does mm -hmm. but he needs bodies vessels that will be submitted to him that he can quicken that will host his anointing that's right that will move in the power why do we spirit. believe in hosting spiritual stuff on the dark side but when it comes to God, we, we have we, we get all one cow and we can't figure it out and we and we deny it and say, oh my goodness, I that's think got because, fruity or I think because we haven't understood uh, to Lady. answer that real quickly. I don't yeah. think we understood the ministry of Jesus. Yeah. When Jesus was born, we put him in a, a, a class way up there. We put yeah. we put him on the top of the hill and say, oh, that, that was the Messiah. That's right. Jesus. Right. That was God the in the God. flesh. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But what we haven't done is studied the whole the Holy Lord, Spirit. 
the whole revelation of God, <laughs> where God was going to come as a man. Yeah. He was going to empty himself to show us mm -hmm. how to walk out as a man yeah. mm -hmm. to redeem what the first man did right. that sinned. He's going to redeem that, but also show us how to walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's the point we didn't understand. Jesus took on flesh like we live in the flesh. He was tempted in every point as we were and tempted like in. That, you and he had to Hebrews learn to walk it out in the spirit. Right. And he, you take us to Hebrews 2 and 4 and said, so he can aid us. So that we can walk his walk. Because he only he said, I only say and do mm -hmm. what my father says. That's right. And he said, I came to make him your father. Right. So if he is Father God to you and you are born of him, right. born of the Spirit, then you can say what right. he says to say, do what he says to do, go where he says to go. Right. But you have to be sensitive I know I only have to a few, hear that. A few minutes left. Yeah. Let me let me verify what right. you just said and I said. <laughs> Here's Jesus, he's born, he is God. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word, word was with God, word was God, verse fourteen was born, he became flesh. <laughs> right. Okay, right. John one one fourteen. Yeah. Okay, right. Hebrews chapter uh, two and four, he took on flesh. Right. Not the seed of an angel, but a seed of Man. Abraham mm -hmm. or man, flesh mm -hmm. and blood. And so Jesus emptied himself. He said, I empty my glory, Philippians chapter two, verse five through nine. Mm -hmm. he, he had to be obedient as a man. Mm -hmm. So for 30 years, Jesus did nothing. Right. He never healed nobody, delivered anybody, prayed for anybody. He all was he not was not on any radar map. Right. All he was was a carpenter. All yeah. he was was a carpenter of a small town called Nazareth. Yeah. When you had carpentry work to be done, you called Jesus and his dad Joseph, yeah. and they came over and they repaired your porch or right. whatever. At age 30, though, God sends him down to the river, Jordan, and his cousins there under a power of the anointing, baptized. When he comes up, the Holy Spirit comes on him. The same Holy Spirit he told those 120 to wait in that upper room till the Spirit of God comes upon you before you do ministry. You'll be in due for power. Right after Jesus is anointed with the Holy Ghost, his whole life changes. He puts away his carpentry belt. He puts away his tools. He puts away his firstborn uh, uh, position as the firstborn of Joseph and mm -hmm. Mary. He walks away from the family. He mm -hmm. now is about the father's business. Mm -hmm. And then you start to see him moving and teaching, preaching, and healing. You see the manifestations begin to happen. Mm -hmm. And he said numerous times through the book of John, I can do nothing of myself. Mm -hmm. What I see my God tell me, I say. What I hear my father tell me, I say. What I see my father do, I do. He literally had to rely totally on the Holy Spirit and to show him what to say and do. And women, and yeah. John 14, 12 says, if you believe in me, yeah. not only will you do the things that I did. So the it's greater, telling you, yeah. we have to totally rely mm -hmm. on the Spirit of God to guide us and direct us. And that's why we get over in 1 Corinthians 12, mm -hmm. says that they're the gifts of the Spirit, yeah. the ministration of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the operation and of, and of God. And Ephesians 5, 1 says, be imitators of God right. as dear children. Right. So if God is a supernatural God, if if He is, right, if He is, but see, and you're born of Him, but see, then, just like the laws work in yeah. the natural realm, yeah, we have to work the laws of Christ, right, and, and you can't violate the laws right. of the natural. You'll get burnt, or you'll get fined, or put in jail, right. or you got to also can't violate the laws of the Spirit, right. and that's in Romans chapter eight, one and two. You got to understand that there's laws that operate in both realms. There's boundaries, and then there's places where you take off the boundaries. Right. And we get confused in those. Right. And so, if we're going to walk in the supernatural, mm -hmm. you got to do it the way God designed it to be done. And, that and how only are you going to figure it, that out? And the blueprint is the Word of God. <laughs> okay. And to bring the blueprint out is by mm -hmm. speaking in other tongues. Okay. He allows this blueprint to come alive in you and begins to show mm -hmm. you things by the Spirit of God how to bring forth that construction mm. of how he wants to build that church and that yep. community and I love to be that. effective in, in that community. In the scriptures in John 14 to 16 chapters, it says he can, he can bring things to your remembrance mm -hmm. and he can show you things to come. But in Romans 8, he said you can be led now by the Spirit of God. So he right. takes care of past, present, future. And, and that's good. And, and just, to, mm -hmm. I love that scripture over there when you share that. Mm -hmm. What people don't understand, Satan entered into Judas, mm -hmm. and he was over there betraying to the religious people mm -hmm. uh, Jesus to them so right. they could crucify him. So the devil did not get in on his teaching. That's why John chapter 14, 15, 16, 17 is very precious to the church because mm -hmm. Satan didn't get in on those things. He was busy. <laughs> he was busy trying to kill Jesus, mm -hmm. betraying him to the, to the religious mind. Mm -hmm. But Jesus got to share the covenant Mm -hmm. And the and the love of the covenant and what we were going to have mm -hmm. when he but he had to leave in order for that to come right he said I cannot I, and they didn't I have understand to leave that. and he said you don't understand but and I that's got to why leave we you. have 
acts then right after that situation. Right, because he endues them with the same power that he had. Now, we'll never have the same measure on us right. that he had because right. he had right, no death measure. in him. Yeah. But we will have measures as mm -hmm. it's needed. Mm -hmm. And that's what, here, here's one last thought. Mm -hmm. In the new birth, you, we all receive the same measure. Right. You will not receive any more than I will, but we, yeah. I can move that measure right. by the word of God. Right. I can increase mm -hmm. in love. I can increase in my righteousness. I can right. increase my sanctity. But in the baptism of the Spirit, it's by measures mm -hmm. of what is needed. Right. If there's a something great that's needed, he'll give you stronger anointing. Yeah. If it's something little that's needed, it'll be mm -hmm. a little anointing. It, yeah. it varies in measures. And that's as he wills because he is... He is orchestrating that part. Right, through the ministration yeah. of Jesus Christ so is God's down. operation. Close this down. Right. So we, we are natural people in that we're born with natural bodies in a natural world. Right. But we're supernatural in that we're born of the Spirit. Right. We contain the Spirit of God. And we can increase the measures that we walk in. Right. By making ourselves sensitive and available. Right. We can live our, yeah. our life as Jesus the carpenter. Mm -hmm. Live a good life. Yeah. Be a good kid. Yeah. Grow up doing the right thing. Yeah. Or we can come into the baptism of the Holy Spirit like Jesus did at age 30 mm -hmm. and begin to operate in ministry as mm -hmm. he did. He'll yeah. allow you to live in either of those two realms, mm -hmm. but it's your choice how right. deep you want to go. Mm -hmm. If you want to do nothing of the, of the supernatural, fine, fine, mm -hmm. fine. But at some point, but, but some point, at some point, the supernatural should be natural. But again, there's cost to that. Yeah. When you deny, well, uh, yeah, I, know. I don't want to get into all that right. because that's closing. discerning the body to Christ. <laughs> and I don't want to get yeah, into any of down. that. You know? So in closing down, it is available right. in that God meets you where your desire is and how far you are. Right. And then he, but then but I know believe, that when you do that, there, there can be a and, demand and placed Can I on share that. one thought left? Yeah. Can I get one minute, one second? That's why it's important to get under the right pastor mm -hmm. that teaches the word of God because faith has to operate in both of those realms, in the new birth and the baptism mm -hmm. of the Spirit. And for you to come into knowledge of those things, it's only by the teaching of the Word. Which was God's plan. Which brings desires to yeah. go deeper into Him. Right. If you're not taught the Word of God, you're in an ignorance. Mm -hmm. That's darkness. You just don't know. You're limited. So you're, you're limited. Kept. Very good. Mm -hmm. And so when you come under the Word, and then you, God can convict, convince, expose, and rebuke mm -hmm. you, and then that brings you in a total different yeah. ballpark because mm -hmm. God's going to begin, because He called you, chose you, and ordained you, He wants you to reach a certain place plateau okay. in him so thank you for tuning in right. and we will probably build on this because right. in some ways we call it spiritology because you're studying the realm of the spirit it is spirituality and right. so we want to encourage you to look deep into the things of god's word and ask the holy ghost right. to teach it right. and thanks for tuning in and also we have services 10 a.m 582 rockingham road Living Hope Fellowship, Ellis Falls. And we have Bible study at 6 p.m. on Tuesday nights. And if we you want to stream around 10 And if you want to get in on the sermon and you don't want to come to church, we kind of start the live streaming around 10.30 yeah. on mm -hmm. Living Hope Fellowship. Facebook page. Facebook or YouTube. And YouTube, yep. And so we thank you, in fact, TV, giving this opportunity, and God bless. Yep.